This is the third of the six video series on x86 assembly language. In this video, we will understand arithmetic operations along with examples. Uh, this is the content that we will be looking at in this video. We will start with the Lial command, with the Lial instruction, the load effective address, to wind up what's left of uh, the addressing mode from the previous video. Then we look into arithmetic and logical instruction supported in the x86 architecture, along with two implementation examples. So uh, here is an instruction used in the x86 architecture for address computation. The instruction is called Leal that go that gets that gets a source. So the source operand is an address mode expression. Any of the expressions that we saw in the video on addressing modes. So what this instruction does is that it evaluates the address mode expression and puts the result address into the destination operand. Uh, for example, in the expression uh, in the parentheses is what is called the address mode expression. I hope you remember the uh, parameters of the address mode expression, D, R, B, R, I, and scale, right? What is this instruction going to do? Well, uh, basically this instruction would add EDX plus four times ECX, and the result will be uh, stored in register EAX. So naturally, one may ask, what are the uses of this instruction? Well, the use of Leal would be where you want to know the address of a variable without a memory reference. So if you have this in your C code, where you have a pointer to a memory location, and you want to get the address of the ith element of array x, okay? Since you just want to get the address, you are not doing a memory access. So in this case, you are going to be using this instruction, Lial. But this instruction can also be used to compute any arithmetic, any arithmetic expression of the form x plus k times k times i. A very common uh, used building block, also called MAC, that stands for multiply and accumulate if the destination is also x. Now let's talk about some general operations that are used in evaluating computational expressions for implementing a variety of logic on the hardware. After a discussion on these instructions, we will put them all to test for understanding it by actually seeing it executing various logic. Uh, first, we start with instruction that requires two operands. As the x86 instruction set architecture has a variety of instructions. Some take, some, some take two operands and some take one operand. So in this slide, we are so in this slide we are talking about instructions that takes two operands, also called binary instructions. So we have a bunch of instructions. Uh, the first one is an arithmetic addition that takes two operands, uh, the source and destination. And since we are using the add assembly syntax, the destination is on the right hand side, and is also one of the operands, right? So what this instruction does is that it takes the destination and adds the source to it and the result gets back to the destination. The sub, the sub is very similar except that it does subtraction. That is destination minus the source and assigns the results to the destination. And the IML instruction does the same thing except that it does multiplication between the source and operand. These are some of the instructions that perform arithmetic operations. And remember the Lial instruction too, uh, that could also be used for evaluating arithmetic expressions. Uh, so these were some arithmetic operation from the x86 architecture. Now we turn to logical operations. Uh, first, we are going to see instructions that actually does shifts. It shifts bitwise, okay? So shift left or shift so shift left or SHLL, also called a SAL, 
SAWLs is is doing a shift arithmetic left. So this is shifting to the left. So it gets the destination value and shifts it left by the amount in the source operand and stores it back into the destination register. Easy enough, right? Uh, now the shift arithmetic right operation shifts to the right as the name implies, but it preserves the sign bit. It does something special with the sign bit, okay? That is called sign extension. The vacuum created by the arithmetic right shift is sign extended, meaning that gap is filled with whatever the sign bit or the most significant bit is, okay? Then the shift right is shifting. Then the shift right is shifting to the right, okay? Except that this is shift logical. It does not sign extend. Instead, it does a zero extension. As the shift creates a vacuum, at the upper bits that are zero padded. So these are the instructions uh, used for shifting. Then we have the XOR operation, the AND operation, and the OR operation that takes the source and destination and does the logical operation and writes the result back into the destination. So these are classified as the set of instructions used for evaluating logical operations. But you have to watch out for the argument order. That's actually very important because the argument order affects your results, especially for subtract. Also note that there is no distinction here between signs and unsigned in. Why is that? Well, it's because Remember that if you choose complements, you can do arithmetic without regards for the sign. But note that you do have to worry about whether you're doing shift arithmetic or shift logical because of the sign bit. So here are some other, uh, so here are some other arithmetic operations that uses one operand. These are called unary instructions because it takes a single operand. This is, the, this is the increment instruction that increments the destination by just one and place the result in the destination. Similarly, this is the decrement instruction that subtracts one from the destination. Then we have the negate instruction actually uh, that just changes the sign bit. The not instruction does a bitwise complement, okay? So that's cool, right? Okay, so now let's put everything together in an example that uses Lial and other arithmetic and logical instructions to actually see them work. Uh, this is the C code that we are going to see. How is it implemented in assembly by the compiler, okay? So let's see how this works. This is what the compiler has for us in store. So recall that we have the setup stuff that's just saving the stack pointer. And we also have a finish stuff that is just restoring the stack pointer and the return value as well, okay? And this is the body of, uh, the, of our uh, program. This is what we are going to focus on for now. First of all, this is our stack. So we know, uh, so, so we know where are the uh, parameters stored. And we have three, and we have three uh, parameters that are integers, that is 32 bit long, which means, the, which means the parameters are stored onto the stack because we are using the 32 bit architecture and the parameters to a function are passed through the stack. Well, uh, what are the first two instructions doing here? Uh, well, they are just reading X and Y from the stack. Well, they are just reading X and Y from the stack and loading them into EAX and EBX respectively. Okay, That's, uh, that should be easy. Then we have the Lial instruction, a load effective address. And we know what format of addressing mode does two registers inside a parenthesis mean, right? The instruction is just going to add EDX with EAX and result of this is then stored 
in ECX, okay? As we said that the instruction Leal can be used for arithmetic operations and where we are using the Leal to evaluate and we are using the Leal to evaluate an arithmetic expression, the expression looks like an address expression. Address calculation, but since the contents of the registers are values and not addresses, this essentially calculates the expression X plus Y. Now the next two instructions. Now the next two instructions highlighted in light blue actually is an implementation of the expression T4 is equal to 48Y. And notice how, and notice how is the C expression broken down into two instructions in assembly. In the first of these, in the first of these instructions, it is Again, using a layout, but with a different combination of uh, of mode expression. It has a displacement base. Uh, it has a displacement uh, base and index base and index registers and scale. I hope you remember this terminology from the previous video on addressing modes. Right? Okay. So. Okay. So. What this statement does is that this instruction gets EDX, okay, and adds it with two times EDX and store it back into register EDX, okay? So that's why we get EDX equals Y plus two times Y, which is the same as, which is the same thing as uh, three times Y. And then the results in EDX are again shifted in the next instruction. So uh, here we have a shift. So here we have a shift arithmetic left by four. And what does it mean to shift by four? Well, we know that it is the same thing as multiplying by two to the power of four, which is 16. That's why we now, uh, that's why now we get 16 times three equals 48. And effectively now we are storing 48 times y uh, 48 times y into edx because before uh, we had a 3y and mul multiplying by 16 now i have 48y and store it in to into edx that essentially is what is given in the c expression t4 is equal to 48y the compiler choose to break it in this way or implement it in this way the, the compiler choose to implement it in this way so now we are implementing the expression in green which says, which, say, which says T2 is equal to Z plus T1. And please note that the expression is deferred until this time and is executed out of order by the compiler. So this is how compilers can also choose the order of implementing expressions that are not dependent on other instructions. This time we have an add expression that uses memory addressing to get the third that uses the memory addressing to get the third uh, parameter located at an offset of 16 uh, bytes from the base pointer and adds it to uh, ECX that is holding the result of T1, essentially calculating T2 is equal to X plus Y plus Z. Now it's implementing the expression T5 is equal to T3 plus T4, okay? So what the compiler does here is that it did inline computation using Leal. It is adding the result of it is adding the result of T4 that is in the register EDX with EAX that holds the value of X and the displacement of four also gets added. Essentially, given uh, essentially giving us T5 is equal to T3 plus T4. So that was cool, right? So this is another way compiler may choose to combine multiple expressions, multiple high level expressions into one instruction. Okay. And finally, the last expression of our function is implemented using IML instruction that multiplies ECX and EAX and the result is stored into register EAX. This is the end of this example. So we, so, uh, so we have a variety of 
arithmetic and logical operations that would surely be helpful in understanding the instructions we saw in this video. So just to recap the observations that we encountered over this example, uh, things that the compiler may choose to implement. The instructions are in, in different order than what appeared in the C code. Uh, you have also noticed expressions in orange that are combined by the compiler in its conversion to assembly, right? And also green comes before blue expression in C, but in the assembly Im implementation, the blue comes before green, okay? Uh, so this is very interesting to note that some expressions require multiple instructions in assembly, the one in blue, and some instructions like the one in orange covers multiple expressions in C. And the other interesting things is that you get the same assembly code if you compile this expression. So these are the surprises that the compilers might give you. Okay, so let's see some more interesting surprises that the compiler has at store for you. So uh, let us see another example implementing the function logical uh, that takes uh, two uh, parameters and uses logical operations to evaluate many logical expressions such as XORs and shifts, etc. So again here, uh, similar to the previous example, we have our uh, parameters X and Y that needs to be loaded from the stack. And this is our code. As before, it also has a setup and finish blocks for administrative purposes to execute the function smoothly and then back to the caller, okay? We will focus on the body part of the implementation, right? So the first instruction as before loads X, that is eight bytes away from EBP. So the move L adds EBP to the offset eight and loads the value to the register EAX. The second instruction here implements an XOR expression. What is special about this instruction? The interesting thing here is that one of the source operand of this uh, logical instruction comes directly from the memory. And this memory operand happens to point to the second uh, parameter Y and hence the instruction implements X XOR Y. The next, in the next instruction implements the shift operator. It shifts the contents of it shifts the contents of EAX by the amount given in the source operand. So it shifts right by 17 and writes the result back into EAX, back into register EAX, okay? So the compiler chose shift arithmetic, right? And finally, this instruction here is implementing these two expressions in orange. Note that the first expression is assigning a constant in the variable mask. So what the compiler does here is instead of evaluating that expression, the compiler sees that one left shift by 13 minus seven is, is a constant and just replaces it with the equivalent value 8185 in decimal directly in the code. This left shift and subtraction is computed once at compile time because it is not going to change so that's going to be much faster. So this is the level of optimization that the compilers can do for you. Okay. This adds to the list of observations that we had from the previous example. So add to that list, uh, how compilers does some level of optimization by uh, pre-computing some instructions during comp compilation or during compile time. Okay. So that is it for this session. And I hope that uh, we hopefully have built enough muscles to take on the complex control flow related stuff that give you ways to program your processor for uh, complex programs. In the next video, we talk about control flow operations.